Hi, Jay Smith here again. This is a follow-up to a live stream that Hatun and I did earlier this week. Hatun and I wanted to look at the coins and we were really looking at these articles that are now coming out and the, uh, the galleries of the coins there at the British Museum, which Hatun and I went and looked at back in September of last year. And it really hit our fancy because suddenly we realized when you look at those coins that they had in the galleries, in the Islamic galleries, uh, they were not really telling the whole story. They weren't going and unpacking the significance of the coins. Now, one of the things that we've always had a problem with uh, when we look at the history of Islam, when we look at the beginning of Islam, those those years of the what they call the rightly guided caliphs, which include Muhammad as well. Before that, the four rightly guided caliphs that come right after Muhammad. The biggest problem we've had historically is we just don't have anything from that period. We have nothing to look at. There's nothing written from Arab sources of Muhammad, of the city of Mecca, of this whole story that follows him moving from Mecca to Medina, of him receiving a book called the Quran, of any of this, what what should be the most important part of Islamic history, the very beginning part of Islamic history, which has only happened 1400 years ago, a very short time when we're talking about history. And there should be enormous amount of material that should be written about this man, about who he is, what he said, what he did, where he went, all the things that happened in that first initial period of Islam that started when the Khilafat was inaugurated in 620, really 624 would be when it was inaugurated, right up until 661. So from that period of 624 up until 620, 661, roughly 40 years, there should be some kind of material there. And there isn't. There's nothing. We can't find anything. The first time we hear any uh, of any uh, writings about his life are what we know as the Siratul Rasulullah, written by Ibn Isham in 833, Al-Waqidi in 835. The first time we hear of the sayings of Muhammad don't appear until 870 by Al-Buhari. Then we have Muslim, Tirmidhi, Daud, and others that follow him after that. But nothing from the time when Muhammad lived. Nothing from this time when this caliphate was being inaugurated, except now we do. Huge frustration up to this time, but now we have something we can look at. Coins. Coins. I love coins. Well, we all love coins, don't we? Because you can buy things with coins. You can barter with coins. Coins are used much more for just bartering, though. Coins are minted by rulers to announce who they are. Coins have reference to who is in charge. And because of the fact in the 7th century they didn't have radio, they didn't have television, they didn't have newspapers, they used coins. Coins were what was used to then say, this is the person in power, and this is the date of that coins mint, and in many cases where it was minted. And the other thing they would do with coins is they would then give a, especially ancient coins, not modern day coins, but ancient coins, especially this time period in the 7th century, they would announce which religion they followed, which religion, which god they worshipped. So they would put their name, the date, the place the mint was made, and then they would announce who their god is or what uh, religion they belong to. And they would give a symbol of that religion. And in the 7th century, the two biggest religions that existed at that time in that part of the world, in the Middle East, were the Byzantines, the, who were Christian, and the Sassanians, who were the Sassanians, who were Persians. And so because of that, we're going to look at that time period, and we're going to look at the coins that they minted. Since we can't find anything else, we can't find any documents from that time period, we can't find artifacts that announce who these caliphs are, like Abu Bakr from 632 to 634, Umar who ruled from 634 to 644, Uthman that came into power from 644 to 656, and then Ali, the last of the fourth rightly guided caliph, who then ruled from 656 to 661. When then Mu'awiyah comes into power, and Mu'awiyah is highly important, we're going to talk more about him with these coins. So let's go back and let's take a look and let's see what coins we have 
and I'll be using a lot that's coming from these articles. We'll be looking a lot that has come from also from the internet that I've pulled down and books that have been written. I'll be referring to them, but let's just go through and let's look at these coins. And let's look at this one here. Now, this is the first coin. Take a look at it and you will see it is a Byzantine solidus. Uh, the Byzantines who ruled in the north and the west of part of the Arabia, uh, what we know, the, the eastern coast of the Mediterranean, that whole swath of land that includes to what today would be Egypt and, of course, Israel, as you move up the coast, Lebanon, Syria, on up through Turkey, and then on over to the west. That was the Byzantine area, and uh, they, were, they were the ones that were the Christians at that time. Now, meanwhile, there was another big empire known as the Sassanids, and that they were Persian. Their religion would have been Zoroastrian. And they were in the eastern part of the what then later became the Arab Empire. And they did not have solidus. They would have had they would have had silver coins. But let's look at these the solidus that you see here. Take a look at this solidus, and you will notice that on the obverse, that means the front side, uh, you have a golden image of the Emperor Heraclius. He ruled from 610 to 641. Those are his two sons on either side, Constantine and Heraclitus. Heraclius, uh, the, both two sons of Heraclius. Notice what they have in their hands. They have an orb, and there's a cross above the orb. That cross proves that they're Christian. That's their image. On the back side, which would be the reverse of that coin, uh, you have a Byzantine cross, and you can see the Byzantine cross there, and it has a pedestal, and it was written in either Greek or Latin. Uh, some uh, dispute that, but if you can see that, you can see that it is distinctly a cross on four pedestals. But proving that at this period, this was all Christian, and this was the coin that was used right up until the 660s, when then 661, when Mu'awiyah comes to power. Now, Here's the big problem. Why is it during that whole period that you have this coin, you don't have any Islamic coins? Because we do know that Islam came to power in 624 when, according to Islamic tradition, that from the traditions that appear in the 9th and 10th century, you do have, uh, well, you have the whole central part of the Arabian Peninsula known as the Hijaz. And I'm going to put up a map here. I want you to look at this map. Because this map shows you what we're talking about. You can see the brown area. Look at Mecca and Medina. That whole brown area is the area that Islam controlled at the time of the Prophet's death in 632. That brown area, and a little bit over in Oman, you can see a little tip of it in Oman, that's their control. They controlled all that area up until 632. Now, you might say, well, that's not that big an area, so therefore they wouldn't be able to have much coinage. They would have to use whatever is around them. But they didn't stay there. And then you look in the orange area. See the orange area that includes Syria, includes Egypt, it includes Iraq, it includes Iran, it includes Baluchistan, all the way over to Afghanistan, and almost and all of the Arabian Peninsula. And then going to the west, it continue, goes all the way up over to Tripoli, up until 661. So this is the time of the rightly guided caliph. From 632 to 661, there, the, the frontiers of Islam really expanded. Look at all these countries that came under their control. Much of them are, well, the whole part area over to the right or to the east would be the Sassanid area. They just destroyed the Sassanids. They took over these great cities of Baghdad, ba uh, Basra, Baghdad, Damascus, Jerusalem, and Cairo. Uh, Damascus, Jerusalem, and Cairo would be where the, where the Byzantines controlled. So they pushed the Byzantines back and they pushed the Sassanids back. And they then took over the control of these great cities moving right across from Cairo all the way over to Tripoli in the west, moving across from Baghdad and to Isfahan and to Merv and to Herat, and all the way almost over it, almost touching Afghanistan in the east. That was their control. So the question is, where are the coins? Why don't they have coins? If they control that much of the land, and now they were the new rulers, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, why didn't they mint coins? That's what you do. That's how you announce yourself. This is the tradition of every conqueror. The first thing you do is mint their own coins, put their faces on it, put their name on it, and put their religion on it.
We can't find it. However, we can find things that were happening because people coins were being minted. Coins, especially in the East. Let's take a look at this coin here. Look at this coin here. This is a coin from the Byzantine proxy states of 640 to 660. So these are all Arab coins. And if you want, I want you to look at those red squares that are there on the coins. This is the front and the back. This is a copper follis. Uh, the copper coins that were minted by the western part of the Arab Empire, they used both gold and copper. The eastern Sassanids would use only silver. And here you have a copper coin. Follis uh, has a cross above the head of Constance II. This is an Arab. These are now Arab coins. These are the time when supposedly Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman are now in power. Why are they minting coins of a Byzantine emperor? Why are they putting a cross on his scepter? Why is there a cross on the back side? The reverse side is the letter M. Now M is the numeral 40. And so this is a denomination of 40 Numi, which would be the denomination at that time uh, for the Byzantines. Here you have clearly a Christian coin. Uh, it has a cross on the front. It has a cross on the back. So those even those under the rule of the Byzantines, the Arabs still seem to retain a Christian identity. But they weren't under the rule of the Byzantines by this time. They had thrown the Byzantines out. Why are they therefore not introducing their own coins? This is clearly not an Islamic coin. Now, when you go up online, you will see that these are all Islamic coins. They claim that they're Islamic, but how can they be Islamic when they have crosses on them? And there's no reference to Muhammad there. There's no reference to Allah yet. Yet. And there's certainly no reference to any Quranic verse. Especially the Shahada, which should be there, or the Bismillah, which should be there. You don't find these on these coins from 640 to 660. Now, so when is, does Islam finally mint its own coins? When do the Muslims finally tell us who they are and announce their arrival? Let's go to Mu'awiyah, because he is the beginning of the Umayyad Caliphate. This is the great caliphate that, consist, that existed from 661 all the way to 740s, to the mid-8th century. So from the mid 7th century up into the mid 8th century, and here is his first coin. Let's take a look at this one here. And this is a coin that Mu'awiyah first minted. It's a gold coin here. Uh, so this is, because it's a gold coin, it would be a solidus. But interestingly, when you look at it, you notice his image is not on the coin. What's on the front of the coin? That's the Byzantine Emperor Heraclius, who ruled from 610 to 641. So this is harking back to a Byzantine emperor, not a Muslim uh, caliph, and certainly not Mu'awiyah in this case. And there you have his son, Constantine. The Latin inscription in, uh, uh, on the backside around what was the Byzantine cross minus the cross piece, and only you can see a very small cross piece has been put on there. Now, this, when he introduced this, this coin was boycotted by the Christians under his rule. They boycotted him. They wouldn't use this coin because of the fact the Byzantine cross had been defaced. Nonetheless, the question I'm asking is, why in the world does Mu'awiyah even show a Christian emperor and his son and not himself on his coin? This coin definitely is not Islamic. Because it was boycotted, he then had to introduce this next coin. This is the next one we're going to put up. Uh, this is from a 661. Now, Mu'awiyah continued right up until 680. And you can see here, this is not a, this is a phallus, this is a copper coin. And uh, you can see that Mu'awiyah has a faceless emperor with a cross above his head and in, uh, uh, on, in his hand. And on the reverse, you have the 40 Numi, which is the numeral uh, denomination. Uh, there, you can see that in, uh, above it, however, is a cross. So that's where the, look at the red squares. Those are the crosses that have been added. Again, to placate the Christians. So the question I have to ask is, was Mu'awiyah a Muslim? Or was he still a Christian at this time? Fascinating to me, because to, I, I would like to know when Islam finally mints its own coins. When does Islam really come uh, into the fore? When do we really know that Islam comes as a religion? Seems to me that he is placating the Christians here, and as the, fa the fact that he was way up in Damascus, he now controlled from Damascus, did so all the way up in the 680. These coins continue right up into 680. 
now we're a good well if the if the caliphate started in 624 uh, we're a good 60 years later and still we do not see a muslim coin not at all but let's go to this coin here i wanted to start with this one this is a silver drachma which was also minted in 661 but in the eastern part in the sassanidian part and if you see it look at it carefully you will see um kasra uh, the the sassanidian um, ruler the Shah that's a picture of him from the side and on the margin take a look at the margin of the front side you will see Lila unto Allah this is the first reference we have to a Muslim context on the back side however take a look and see what's on the back side is a typical Arab Sassanian fire altar with the attendance with the mint name Darab Gid because that's Darab Gid because that's where it was minted now Allah's name now appears on the Umayyad coins beginning to show a possible Arab influence although you might say Allah is not, is a Nabataean name it comes from Ilaha so it could be very much a Nabataean influence because of the fact that the Nabataeans created the name for God the God name for God was all over the Nabataeans and that's why they just adopted that name so anyhow could be borrowed from them nonetheless there it is that's the first reference possibly to an Islamic identity starting in 661 that's 40 years too late but it's still no reference to Muhammad no reference to the Shahada no reference to the Bismillah the full Bismillah so let's go to the next coin because this one now is 663 so this is two years after Mu'awiyah is in power and his name is on the coin there you can see it there in the inner part of the, next to the head of Khosrau there is Mu'awiyah and it says in Pahlavi commander of the faithful but in the margin Bismillah in the name of Allah here is the Bismillah in the name of Allah that's the first time we see it introduced in 663 two years after his uh, come uh, a rise to power as the first of the Umayyad caliphs of doing in the Sufyani family now the significance of this well take a look on the back coin the back side is that typical Arab Sassanid fire altar with attendance which fire altar that's the Zoroastrian fire altar so that's a Zoroastrian uh, that's a Zoroastrian icon that is proven that this is still Zoroastrian so in the eastern part of the empire they're still Zoroastrian even Mu'awiyah is giving homage to the Zoroastrians maybe he was a Zoroastrian himself but he puts and introduces Bismillah the big in the name of Allah from just unto Allah it now becomes Bismillah but that's not the Bismillah we see in the Quran that's not the Bismillah we see in chapter 1 of the Fatiha in verse 1 of the Quran when you look at the Quran the Bismillah we see there is Bil Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim that is not here Bismillah Al-Rahman Al-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, according to what the Quran says in Arabic right there. So you've got a different Bismillah here than what you have in the Quran. Hold on to that. That's important. We'll get to that. Now, let's continue on with Ma'awiyah. And let's go to 667. Because here you have the obverse, front side, is Bismillah Al-Malik. So you see the Bismillah on the bottom right-hand uh, corner of the coin. And then after the notice what's around uh, on the bottom and also on the back side of the coin is a crescent and a star star and crescent star and crescent this is a Sassanian star and crescent not the Muslim star and crescent but here there in the uh, the star and crescent at the bottom of the coin you have Bismillah Allah Bismillah which is in the name of God and then on the other side the left side of that star and crescent is Malik Al Malik in the name of God the King Al Malik, a Sassanian coin. So the sequence that we have in 661 starts with unto Allah, Ilaha. Then Mu'awiyah adds in 663, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. And here he adds in 667, Bismillah al Malik, which means Bismillah, in the name of Allah, the king. Still no reference to Muhammad. Still no reference to the Shahada. Still no reference to anything that we can see is really Islamic. Nothing more than the king in the name of Allah. Allah could be any god because it is the Nabataean god that has been borrowed. We don't get any reference to a really Islamic coin until 6, 
692. Now take a look at this picture here. Here you have in 692 Abdul Malik. Now we've talked about Abdul Malik a lot, haven't we? We've talked about Abdul Malik as the one that built the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem in 691. He is the one that also uh, uh, has these protocols, uh, the protocols which exist within the Sufiani period. They have been researched by Yehuda Neville and those those uh, caliphal protocols, they have a bismillah that's not the same the bismillah we have in the Quran today. As I said earlier, they do not talk about the Quran. Those caliphal protocols don't talk about Muhammad. They don't talk about anything that we sh you would think they would be talking about. They don't talk about Mecca. Uh, they don't talk about anything that should be important to Islam. They're just nothing more than protocols. These are the official documents that the caliphs have that he uh, has written, yet they should be replete with Islamic terms and Islamic references. This doesn't occur. And Yehuda never points this out until 691 and possibly and 692. Between 691 and 692, you suddenly get the Shahada. La ilaha illaha Muhammadur Rasulullah. The Shahada is introduced on those protocols. The Shahada is also introduced on the Dome of the Rock, there in Jerusalem, in the inner ambulatories. And it's introduced on this coin right here. This is the coin I want you to look at, 692. Abdul Malik is, has to pay tribute to Justinian II, who ruled from 669 to 711. He was a Byzantine emperor. He controlled the Arabs at that time. Abdul Malik had to pay homage to him, and he tried. He minted this coin. This is the first coin that he minted, and he tried to pay homage with this coin. Now, we look at that coin, and you'll see you've seen it before. Well, at least you think you've seen it before. This looks like this coin here. Take a look at this coin. Remember this coin that we looked at earlier? This is the coin that we began with. This is the first coin that we began with, which was the uh, the gold solidus of Emperor Heraclius with Constantine and Heraclonus on either side, his two sons. That's the coin we looked at with the Byzantine cross. Well, what does Abdul Malik do? He takes that coin and he reintroduces it, but no longer is it Heraclius. It's now the Caliph, the Caliph who probably is himself. That's no longer Heraclius. It's now a Arab Caliph with his two sons on either side. They've taken the cross off the head. They've taken the cross from the orbs in their hands. On the back side, it's just a pedestal. No cross. There's no Byzantine cross anymore with the letter B and I on either side. And look and see what is written around that deformed Byzantine cross. Bismillah. Illa. Allah. Muhammad Rasulah. Bismillah. Allah. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, in the name of God, forgive my Arabic, in the name of God, there is no God but God alone. Muhammad is his messenger. It's a slap in the face of Justinian. You can see why he refuses to accept the tribute. This is basically a declaration uh, of one-upmanship, just like he'd done on the Dome of the Rock, just like he'd done in the Protocols. He now introduces this coin to pay the tribute to Justinian, refuses that tribute. And they go to war because of that coin. But this, for our purposes, what's most important is this is the first really Islamic coin that we now we can now find. This is the first one that we can now see. And take a look at it. You can see that it has the Shahada there on the reverse side. It's definitely Islamic. Now we're finally getting an Islamic coin. But is it the first to do so? Well, there has been some dispute about this, and I know that uh, in his article, Clive, Dr. Clive Foss says uh, that this coin here that I'm going to put up in 685 uh, that came out in the under the authority of the Al-Malik, again, it was a Persian silver dirham struck in Bishapur in Iran, and it says Muhammad Rasulullah, and he dates it to 685. That's the f one coin that I'm showing you there. On the front, you can see, but on the back side is, interestingly, is the Zoroastrian fire altar. What's it doing on the back side if this is introduced by Abdul Malik? But nonetheless, that's on the eastern part. This is a silver coin. This is not from the Byzantine area. This is from the Sassanid area. Islamic Awareness puts up this coin, and they say that this is from 685 as well, uh, from Zubairid, governor of Bishapur, and uh, that was created by Abdul Malik ibn, al ibn Abd Allah, 
Ibn Amir and has the Bismillah, which is, look at the red part there, there's the Bismillah, and then had Muhammad is his messenger in the green, Muhammad Rasulullah in the green part that, we've, that I've circled there. Now, they say that this predates the coin, the gold coin, Solidus, that Abdul Malik uh, introduces in 692. So this would be the first reference to Muhammad, they're saying. Uh, this would precede it by seven years. Could well be, could well be that these were introduced in 685, would be the first, if that were so, they would be the first references to Muhammad. But they were introduced by Abdul Malik. That's what's important. It's Abdul Malik that introduces this. And it could be that he was introducing this in the eastern regions, in the Sassanid area, where there were no Byzantines, and therefore no one would have complained about it. It could be. And he's still placating the Sassanians because he puts the fire altar on the back side. I want you to look at these uh, this, these two coins here, because uh, here is a coin from the Numista site. Uh, it also has very much the same thing as the one we just looked at. It has the Bismillah in the name of God. Uh, there is no judgment except for God, uh, which is the Kharwarji slogan. And then the Bis Numisbid site, it has another one uh, that it says Bismillah Muhammad Rasulullah. There is the Bismillah Muhammad Rasulullah, the Shahada. On both sides of the back are the Zoroastrian fire altar, very similar to the ones we just looked at, very similar to the ones that Islamic Awareness and Dr. Clive Foss claimed to be from 685. These are dated to 692 and 695. So there seems to be a, uh, there seems to be a disconnect as to how the dates are. And the problem is because the dates are not really well delined there. Regardless of whether the, really that silver coin was minted in 692 after the, the solidus, the gold solidus, or whether it was minted prior to it. Nonetheless, I'm not going to sit there and make, and, and I'm not an expert in this area, but what I will say is what we can agree upon is these were all minted by Abdul Malik, under the authority of Abdul Malik. Because of the fact that Justinian II would not accept this coin here, the coin with the, uh, with the caliph on the front, missing the crosses, deforming the, the cross on the background, he then mints this coin here, and here is the solidus on the front. Uh, you can see he is, puts his image on it. So he really is now coming against the Byzantines. He is kind of thumbing them his, fa the, his nose in their face, and he puts his image on the front side. And it says there around it, the servant of God, Abdul Malik, commander of the believers. On the back side, you have a staff with a globe, which is known as a kutub or a rod. And ascribed around it is the La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God but God. Muhammad is his messenger. So there you see the uh, the shahada uh, on the back side. Muhammad, I'm sorry, uh, Abdul Malik on the front. Here is a copper equivalent uh, that he also mints. So he not only mints gold solidus, he also mints these copper coins. Now the copper coins in the gold are from the Byzantine area of his rule. So that would be along the eastern coast of the Mediterranean. This is in the western part of his empire. So it stands to reason that he would do this because this is in the face of the, uh, of the Byzantines. And he's trying to really c create his own identity there. So that's what he introduces in 693 after the one that tr tried to introduce in 692 failed. He continues these coins with the gold and the copper coins up until 696. And then in 696, he introduces this coin. And this is the coin we're looking for. This is the coin that should have been minted by Muhammad back in 624. It should have been minted by Abu Bakr in 632. This should have been minted by Umar in 634. And should have been minted by Uth Uthman in 644 and should have been minted by Ali in 656. So every one of these, every one of these rightly guided caliphs, including Muhammad as well, should have been minting this coin, because this truly is a Muslim coin. This is the first real Muslim coin. Why? Because the images have been taken off. Have you noticed all the coins I'm showing up to now have images on them? Since where can any Muslims have image on any coin? You've probably been asking that, haven't you? I've been hearing it. I've seen it in your comments. You can't have images. That's true. And this is according to Muhammad himself. 
Yet all these coins up until 696, every one of these coins from 624 all the way up to 696. So we're talking about 70 years. For 70 years, they've all had coins. Mo'uia has coins. Sometimes he has coins of Kostalau, uh, the archaic Shah from the Pahlavi dynasty. But he himself has those images on there. All the coins, even of the Malik has images. Look at this coin here. There it is again, the coins of Abdul Malik. He puts his own image on there in 693. And for three years, he keeps his images on there, even the one that he tried to sell and tried to pay tribute with there in 692. Take a look, three images, image, images, all these images. There cannot be any images on a Muslim coin. That's anathema. That's idolatry. That's why you cannot have any images on any Islamic coin today. And he then introduces this coin in 696 uh, to 697. This truly is an Islamic coin. On the front side, it says, La ilaha illallah mahaduda la sharikala, which means there's no God but God alone. He has no associates. This is not the shahada as we know it today. In the margin, along the outside, the margin there, it says, Muhammadur Rasulullah arsalahu bil hudda wa din al haq I wish I had Al Fadi here to speak to Arabic for you. He could do a lot better than I can. What does that say? Well, how does it translate? Muhammad is the messenger of God whom he sent with guidance and the religion of truth that he might make it prevail over all religions, even if the associates are averse. This is very similar to Surah 9, verse 23. But it's not Surah 9, verse 23. That's what's amazing. It's not the same that we see in the Quran. This is much more than what we see in the Quran. So it's obviously that this predates the Quran. That means the Quran solidified and, and actually simplified what was written on the coin here. So this is the coin there on the front that you have this long reference that Muhammad is a messenger of God and that is that he, uh, that from whom he was given the guidance for the religion of truth, that it might take over and prevail over all other religions. So this is really a declaration of war against all other religions. Then on the back side, Allahu Ahad. Allahu al Samad Lam Yalid Walam Yulad. God is the one, God the Eternal. He did not beget and he was not begotten. This is against Christianity. This is against Byzantine Christianity. This also is similar to what we see on the Dome of the Rock in Surah 112. But it's not the same as Surah 112. So you can see all of these are deformations of what we later come in the Quran, proving that the Quran comes after this, proving the Quran comes subsequent to these coins. This coin is introduced in 696. Those same two verses, certainly the 112 is introduced on the Dome of the Rock in 691. So it's introduced earlier. But it's a deformation of what we see in the Quran. Chapter 9, verse 2, 3 is a, deform, is a deforming, a deformation, a deformation, knowing that does it not equal, does not parallel what we see in the Quran. And then in the margin, it says, in the name of God, in the year it was minted. So this coin not only introduces Muhammad, but it attacks Jesus' divinity. It attacks the begetness uh, of God, Jesus God, the who is beget, begotten Son of God in John 3.16, and it supports Islam's superiority. That's the coin we're looking for. And this is the coin that really introduces a true Islamic ideal. And from here on out, all the way up until 750, this is the coin that is used. From 696 up for the next 60 years, it is, or about the next 50 to 60 years, it is the coin that is used right through the Umayyad kingdom until the Abbasids. Abbasids bring in their own coins. We're not going to get into that right now. But can you see that this is the beginning of Islam as I see it? This is the beginning of taking off the images, introducing the script, taking off this reference to just a deformed Bismillah and introducing the Shahada, a deformed Shahada, introducing the real Shahada. And this is the Shahada that then even gets corrected and changed in the Quran later on. Now, I want to show you one more coin before we end because what you've seen here is another truly Islamic coin. This is also, this is from 697, so it comes after the gold, so, uh, uh, the, gold, the gold coin that we saw earlier. Remember we talked about these gold coins known as Solidus, and we come here to this one here. If you look at it, you'll see on the front it says, La 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 ila ala wahdu la sharikala. There is no God but God alone. He has no associates. That is not the Shahada. Now there again, can you see? That is not the Shahada we have today. That is a attack against 
it really it, it, it's very it's close to 0, 05 is 72 that he has no associates so it's a deformation of the chronic text it's going to come later but it is also an attack against jesus christ it's an attack against the byzantine it's a attack against their view that jesus is god in the obverse, uh, around the uh, around the margins, Muhammad Rasulullah arsalahu bil huda wa din al haq liud diru al al dini kulahi wa la kari al mushrikun. Muhammad is the messenger of God whom he has sent with guidance in the religion of truth. Here again is saying that we have the, he has come with the religion of truth that he might make it prevail over all religions. Here's this attack against all other religions. Even if the associates are averse, even if the associates, who are the associates? Well, they believe the associators are averse. That means the Christians who are, are averse. In the reverse side, on the back side, it says, Alu al-Had, Alu al-Samad, Lam Yalid, Walam Yulad, Walam Yakun Lahu, God is the one, God the eternal. He did not beget and was not begotten, and there is none like unto him. Again, an attack against Jesus Christ, an attack against Christian uh, Byzantine Christianity. On the reverse margin, in the name of God, in the year is minted. So, the coin here also introduces Muhammad. It attacks Jesus' divinity. It attacks his begetness in John 3.16. It, it shows Allah's uniqueness. And it shows Islam superiority. So it's fascinating. These are all attacks against everything they consider to be their threat. So this is the introduction using these coins of what Abdul Malik was all about. He introduced the idea that Muhammad was a prophet. He introduced the idea that Islam, this religion, is going to be the superior religion. He introduces all of this. You can see it in the coins. We've been saying this for years. We've been talking about it, the significance of who Abdul Malik is. The coins seem to support everything we've been saying. And that's why it's interesting. When you look at all these coins, what are our conclusions? Well, pre, uh, prior to 660, all early coins show a clear Christian identity on both sides. We see these in, uh, in, in the golden coins of the Byzantines, the copper coins of the Byzantines, and also the silver coins from the Sassanids. From 624 to 660, we would expect to see all kinds of Islamic coins with the Shahada, Bismillah, and all the rest of, of Muhammad, certainly with Muhammad's name on it. Don't find any of that at all. No coins from the Arab world. What we do find are these Arab proxy coins. These are coins that are usually are copper, silver. Uh, they have a picture of sometimes Heraclius and his son. Other times they have a picture just of a faceless uh, emperor. And, but they always have a cross above his head in his hand and on the back side they have a cross above the letter m which is the 40 uh, denomination of 40 numi then in 661 and this is fascinating in 661 muuya starts the umayyad dynasty and this is the beginning of the first dynasty this is when you should have seen an arabic coin and yet that you still don't see an arabic coin and this is introduced by muuya fascinating he retains these christian symbols up until 680 when he finally dies so we're now 60 years after the the caliphate was inaugurated in 624 we're now in up to 680 and you've introduced he introduces Allah's name and he introduces as a deformed bismillah in along with al malik the king it is not then until abdul malik comes to power some say it is introduced he introduces the coins in us on silver sassanid coins in 685 i'm not going to dispute that nonetheless it is he that starts if it is true then he starts in the sassanid area and bis introduces muhammad and the shahada on those silver sassanid coins it's 692 however that he introduces the solidus the golden one and that's what he introduces to Justinian to pay tribute, which is refused by Justinian, and they go to war because of it. Hey, they refuse the tribute that he's supposed to give. Why? Because he in, he takes off the cross and produces a deformed cross, but most important, along the sides, he introduces the Shahada. That's the first Shahada, and Muhammad's name is in that Shahada. There's no God but God, and Muhammad is a prophet. There along the margins of the coin. However, Fascinating because that was no that was not accepted, even though he put the images of not the caliph. In this case, it wasn't the emperor; it was the images of the caliph and two sons. But he took the crosses off that because it was not accepted. He then had to recoin a new coin in 693, and that's the coin of himself with this big sword. 
But around the, uh, his name uh, is truly Islamic references, because there you see the Shahada that is introduced in 693 up into 696. But in 696, you get real the Mother Lord. All the images are taken off. Now we know that this is no longer this. Uh, this is no longer any uh, tribute to other peoples. This is not has no in no iconoclasm. This is not idolatry. Now you have only Arabic script, and that's what Abdul Malik is famous for for introducing the Arabic script and making it right across his kingdom. At this time, he now rules uh, from Andalusia, which is Spain, all the way over to India. His land has increased. And now he's introducing this Arabic script on this coin in 690 skit. He's taken off his image. No more images. No more references uh, to uh, no more uh, references to Zoroastrianism. So he's taken off the fire altars. He's taken off all the crosses. And now he only introduces what we think is Quranic script, and we turn out to be not Quranic script. It is a deformation of Quranic script, but it's all attacking Jesus Christ, it's attacking Jesus' divinity, it's attacking his begetness, the fact that he is his sonship, and it is introducing Muhammad as the prophet of God. Here is Muhammad finally introduced on these coins in 696, and then of course another one over the Sassan area, the silver coin in 697, and that then becomes the model for all coins from there on out. And from 696, all the coins have this script. The only thing that you'll see change up until 750 are possibly the, the Shahada itself. But that's something that's for another time. That's for another video. We're not going to get in that today. Can you see what we're saying? So how do we now end this? And what does that all mean? What it says to me is that when you look at the coins, they give a story. They tell us a story. The great thing about coins is they, they are pristine. They, are, they do not deteriorate. They do not disintegrate. And they, retain their, uh, they retain their images, and they retain their script, and that's why you can look at it. Because of the fact we have nothing else to go on, because we have fact we don't have any chronic material, because of the fact we don't have any historical records, because of the fact we don't even have archaeological evidence to, see, to show us what's happening when Islam begins in six. 24, uh, uh, there with the rightly guided caliphs from 624 up until 661, that 40, first 40 years, we have to go to the coins. And what the coins show us is a different story than what Islam has been telling us. Islam has always said that when Muhammad came to power, he controlled the Hijaz up until 632. Then his borders, look at the map again, the borders then move out and they move all the way, almost way to Afghanistan in the east and all the way to Tripoli in the west. That's a huge amount of land that includes all these other, take a look and you can see all the land that that includes. Huge amount of, well, what we know today as uh, Libya and Egypt, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Armenia, Afghanistan, Baluchistan, all of these parts, uh, whole, the whole Arabian Peninsula, that all is under their control. And yet they didn't mint any coins with any Islamic identity. No Islamic identity at all. No Bismillah that we can see uh, up in this time. And uh, well, the Bismillah is coming in, but that's coming in with Mu'awiyah. Up until 661, we have no Bismillah. Even the word Allah doesn't inter uh, is not introduced until after 661. And so you can ask, why is it that we don't have it? Well, the coins tell you why. It looks like that they were either in the eastern part, they were Zoroastrian because the fire altars are on those coins. That's the symbol for Zoroastrianism. Or they're Christian because the crosses are above the heads and they're on the scepters. Mu'awiyah is the first one that introduces this Arab identity. Not really an Islamic identity, I would say it's an Arab identity. And he is the first one to introduce Bismillah, the name of Allah himself. Now you might say, well that should show you that that is Islamic. No, Allah is actually Nabataean. It's a borrowed name from the Nabataean, Ilaha, which is the generic name of Dushara, the formal name. And we can go and hold, that's, no, that's for another video for another time. So you can see, he is the first one to do that. And that goes up until 680, but then the person that really introduces an Islamic name, an Islamic coin, would be Abdul Malik. 692 and then 693 and especially in 696 when he eradicates all the images and just has the script. Proving to me that Islam evolved. It looks like it evolved. It was not something that was introduced by Muhammad. It was not something that came complete within 30, within 22 years, as Muslims like to tell us, between 610 and 632. So when Muhammad died, everything was in place. No, it was not in place. No, it was not in place. It looks like the majority of people in that part of the world were still either Christians or they were still Zoroastrians. Even the kings did not, were still make minting coins that were Christian and Zoroastrian. 
Mu'awiyah, who you have fought, but it's 40 years after the caliphate was finally inaugurated, 40 years when he comes to power in 661, gives and creates the great Umayyad Caliphate. Why didn't he have Islamic coins? Why didn't he have Islamic reference points? Why didn't he have the Shahada? Why didn't he have references to Muhammad? Why is it we have to wait till 692? Why is it we have to wait for 70 years to finally get this Islamic coin? And why do we have to wait till 696 to get the script, to get everything in place? But it's still not the script that we see in the Quran. That, we're going to have to find out when that really comes and that coalesces and that parallels the Quran. That's for another time, for another place. I leave this question with you. Did Islam begin with Muhammad? Was it complete in its form that we have today by the time he died in 632? The coins say nothing, another story. And coins are the only material we have today. All of you who've been watching this, it doesn't take much to understand what I've said. You don't have to know Arabic. Can you see? Coins are visual. And that's why this is one of the easiest arguments we've come across in the last number of years. I leave it with you. I've tried to encapsulate it. I've tried to get it within 45 minutes. Looks like it's a little over 45 minutes. A lot better than the two hours we did two days ago. But I hope you understand it. Get back to us. Uh, unpack it. Try to send it off to others. Let's get everybody talking about this because what we're now seeing is that everything we've looked at architecturally, everything that Dan Gibson's looked at with the Qiblas, everything we've now noticed uh, with all the archaeological evidence and especially the documentary evidence, the fact that no Qurans exist at this time, that they only start to be, get, start to be introduced on the Dome of the Rock and then on the coins, and then, of course, the script, the earliest manuscripts, which don't even begin to appear until 705 uh, in the 8th century. It looks like it all is saying the same thing. Islam evolved, did not begin, uh, did not come from God to one man named Muhammad. That man did not have it, uh, it completed and finalized by the time he died in 632. It took another 60 years before that all was introduced. Well, that's an awful lot to say in 47 minutes. Okay then, this is Jay, here in my office. Good to be with you the last 47 minutes. God bless you. Over and out.